Now, workflows. Oh, I got to call them processes now. Okay, so they're not workflows anymore. Um, I have to change the name of my the next edition of my book, I suppose. I still think of them as workflows, but there's two categories of them. There's a workflow and there's this dialogue. The dialogue is interesting. I'll show you a quick example of this. To me, it was a little bit difficult to figure out, you know, what do you do with that? I saw a couple of demos of it until I kind of went through some things that resonated for me and the kind of things that I need to do. I had a hard time understanding it. But basically what a dialogue does is it introduces a UI into a process. So, you know, the way workflows work in CRM4, they're, you know, they're asynchronous. They run in the background, and you can't make a workflow pop up a dialogue to you. What we can do here with these dialogues is create pages, and these pages have, have one or more prompts and responses. I'll show you an example of what that looks like. Think of it as a dialogue. Really, you can introduce a dialogue between the user and the process, so, so the user can kind of respond to it, provide some information. Um, so they're still defined for entities. Notice the category, dialogue. What they look like is something like this, and once I came up with an example or two that, that sort of made sense to me, this got easier. Think of this as a, as a, you're almost creating a wizard. So you have multiple pages, and each page has collections of prompts and responses. You could have an arbitrary number, you can have lots of different ones. We're collecting information from the user, so they might be good for kind of scripted process. You might have a sales process with multiple steps. Um, and you can gather information and branch. So in this scenario here, I'll show you an example of how this works. You know, asking, you know, you know so if, you, if, if, the, if the deployment model is CRM online versus on-premise, I might want to drill down, or if somebody says, yeah, we are using add-ons, I might want to drill down to a question that, uh, that is more specific for that response. So think of these pages as steps in a wizard. You can put hints there for the prompts. I'll show you this. And the process itself, the workflow, it's got access to those responses. So you could store those. You could update records selectively, send emails, all the things you could do with a workflow. But this really opens up a pretty rich um, additional class of things you can do with these, uh, with these kinds of workflows. So let me go out to this and sort of show you how something like that might look. Um, I've got one written for opportunities. So if I just select one of these, I can, and it's, it's on demand, I still haven't quite figured out if these things yet can be exposed in an automatic way. So far I've only been able to see that there, these dialogues are exposed for uh, in an on-demand way. So if I choose start dialogue here, I've got this one, I call it upgrade script. I'll run it now, show you what it looks like to the user, and then I'll show you how you can build these things. So here's my, here's my script. So the scenario here is, you know, I've got a specific, like a package service for CRM upgrade, and I might want to have a process that, like an entry-level sales rep can kind of walk through if they're having a conversation with a customer trying to qualify an opportunity. So, you know, you might say, okay, if you're running CRM online versus on-premise, and if you've got you know 100 users as opposed to you know five or something like that, and notice we've got hints there each step of the way. So we got the tips, right? So I provide some guidance over there. I'll show you what this looks like in a second. There's my users, and let's suppose we're using add-on products. I could put comments here if I wanted to. Notice I've got this next. Since I chose yes there, click next. Now it says which add-on products. You know, maybe I'm using Core Motives, Web2 CRM, and, you know, the uh, email router or something like that, right? So now I click Next. Okay, and I can put some comments here if I want to. Finish. Now, what does it do? Well, it saves all that information. You can probably guess that. So if I was on this one staff opportunity, I think that's where I was. Then I come down here and I see the uh, dialogue sessions. Okay, since that's the first record, the way my list is sorted, they tend to get a lot of test information in here. So I can see the different upgrade scripts scenario. You know, there, that one was canceled. Let me go to one that was completed. Right, so I can keep track of what information was gathered by the user. I could query CRM for user. I can have, you know, I can really complexify this if I want to by you know, adding input arguments and variables and all that kind of stuff. And we'll drill down on this more in subsequent information. Again, this information is persistent. 
I've got handles to it. So you can really do, I think, a pretty interesting class of, uh, of, of workflows and processes with that that you really couldn't, there was really nothing analogous to that in the previous version. Let me show you what those things look like. For those settings, we'll go to the nice, spiffy new process center. And if I look at processes, I could probably, uh, you know, go to uh, these various the selectable views from that pop-up menu there. But here's my upgrade script, the one that we just ran. Notice it's defined for opportunity if I pop this thing open. Okay, here's what those things look like. Instead of publishing and unpublishing, I activate and deactivate. So I'll deactivate that so we can you know, kind of make changes to it. And you get a feel for this, so let's collapse this. So notice it's exposes an on-demand process, and there's no automatic options for this. So I don't know if that's, uh, if that's I haven't quite figured out if you can. I can think of scenarios where you might want to expose this as an automatic process, but I can also see an argument against it. So here's my steps. Now notice steps here have pages. So here's my first page. Then here's the branching. See how I did the branching? If. Okay, now, when you branch, so are they using third-party products or add-ons was the, was the question. That was that third question on the first page. I open up the specify condition here, and, you know, you got to know, you know, what to do with that response, right? Because that's the, the thing that you're going to have this condition test for when it comes up. Let's see. There we go. Okay. So the question was, notice it's local values. So those things show up as local values in the workflow. And then you've got this response value or the response label. So if you know what the values are, you define those at the time you define those responses, 0, 1. Or if you don't mind typing the text, right, you can just do the label. And in my case, it was easy because it was either a yes or no. But anyway, so you can then branch accordingly. And I don't yet know if there's any limitations to, you know, how much you can nest these things. But my guess is... Uh, you'd probably, uh, you know, run out of uh, patience or, or, or lose track of the, the business process before you ran into uh, constraints on this design environment. So this looks like it, it's going to be a pretty good, uh, pretty fruitful area for some kind of user-guided processes or processes that depend on user input. Obviously, you know, a sales process is an easy example of something like that, but certainly it's, it's not the only one. There's all kinds of different scenarios that are different processes that might rely on, uh, on user input. So I think that's going to be an interesting area. Let me jump back to the deck for a minute here.